You're listening to Deimos in the Dark. I'm your host, Deimos. Welcome to the dark. As the god of terror and anxiety, I'm hoping to bring you a little bit of both tonight with a tale I call Barn Owl. When I walked into the barn, it was mostly dark. A few rays of moonlight seeped through the gaps in the boards. The rays of light appeared to be much brighter than mere moonlight in the blackness of the barn's interior. I hadn't thought to bring a light, so I used my cell phone's flashlight app. Turning it on, I could make out a faint shape. Although it creeped me out at first, I moved closer to investigate. Suddenly, what appeared to be a head spun around, eyes glowing in the light of my cell phone looking like something demonic. I stumbled backwards, tripping, and landed hard, flat on my back. I struggled to get up. Even breathing seemed impossible. I had knocked the wind out of myself momentarily, and the panic I was feeling certainly didn't help. I scrambled away from the dark shape, snatching up my cell phone, which had flown behind me when I fell. When I spun back around, sure whatever it was would be on me, I saw a large white figure, about three foot tall, and heard a loud hoo sound echo through the barn. Damn it, I muttered, standing up and brushing myself off. I winced at the pain, just now realizing I'd scraped my palms. Well, Mr. Barnow, it looks like you got me. I chuckled with embarrassment. That's what I get for wandering around in the dark, I muttered to myself, closing the barn door behind me. Heading back to the house, I contemplated how I was to explain this to the missus. She had, after all, told me I should wait till morning to check the place out. Surely the admonishment was inevitable. As I turned the corner of the barn, I was suddenly face to face with someone in the dark. I almost went flying backwards when I realized it was my wife, Samantha. I scared you, I scared you, she said in a taunting voice. Yeah, thanks. What are you doing out here anyway? I asked, trying to change the subject. What was all that noise, Tommy? She replied, ignoring my question. <sighs> Just a barn owl. My wife eyed me suspiciously. A barn owl made all that noise? And why are you all dirty? I tripped. Yeah, okay. She said disbelievingly. The smile on her face said she wasn't done with me yet. I explained every painful detail while my wife chuckled at my expense. I guess that would have scared me too. Samantha finally admitted. This is why I told you to wait till morning. We don't know the place well enough yet. I know. Funny, I'm usually telling you to be more patient. You see, we had bought a ranch. Not a little one-acre mini ranch like the one we'd been renting, but a 64-acre ranch with barns, pastures, and even a silo. There were stalls, a round pen, and an arena. We had a four-car garage, shelter for RV parking, and a huge barn-like workshop. The house was a freshly remodeled four-bedroom with a wraparound porch. This is what we had been trying to get for over ten years, and now it was ours. It would be a lot of work, but it was what we really wanted. The next morning, I would go through everything, making a list of repairs and the material needed for them. The following day, we would bring up the horses, so I had to double check that everything was safe and secure. I also had to make sure one of the barns was ready to receive hay and grain. Don't even get me started on the chickens. Again, it was a lot of work, but it was a labor of love. Morning came early, as it tends to do on a ranch, and after a cup of coffee, I set to work. I decided to check on our resident barn owl first. Entering the barn, the only sign I saw of the owl was a single white feather. 
I set it to the side for later, think I could do something with it for Samantha. I set to work on the chicken coop next. Then the hour, I had it cleaned out, added new bedding, and fortified it. I needed to keep the chickens in and everything else out. Fortunately, the previous owner had laid mesh under the dirt, saving me a lot of labor and a lot of time. I didn't need anything burrowing up from underneath and stealing our eggs. It was off to the stalls next. With the horses arriving soon, it was a priority. I had to check for anything that could injure the animals and eliminate it. I repaired a couple of the gate panels so they could be open and closed without a struggle. I also put fresh chains and clips on the gates to keep the horses in. The stalls were already clean, so I only had to rake the soil. I headed off to the second barn after that, curious as to the interior condition. The hinges were a little loose, and I had to lift the large, heavy wooden door to open it. Luckily, the hinges didn't get way and dropped the barn door right on me. Dust particles floated in the rays of the sun that entered through the gaps in the siding. It reminded me of the night before, including a familiar whoo, whoo. I looked up to find the rather large white owl staring down at me from the rafters. Aren't you supposed to be nocturnal? Whoo, whoo. You, you, I replied. Great, I thought. Now I'm talking to an owl. What am I going to do with you? I started, but when I looked up, the owl was gone. I looked around, but didn't see the owl anywhere. Shrugging my shoulders, I went back to work. Dirty and tired, it was time for a break, and hopefully some lunch. I was not disappointed. Tommy, there you are. Lunch is ready, but you need to clean up and shower before coming to sit down. You're a mess. Thanks. At least you got the clean job, I said laughing. Samantha's brown eyes looked hazel in the sunlight that was spilling through the window. They sparkled with the same radiance that had caught my eye when we first met. She had her raven black hair pulled back and tied into a bun, revealing her slender caramel neckline. She saw me looking and held up the spatula she'd been cooking with. Don't even think about it, mister. You're not getting anywhere near me until you clean up. While I was six foot tall to her five foot three, she was not one to be intimidated. She was a handful, passionate and strong. While she might defer to me in other matters, the house was her domain, and she had no problem letting it be known. Yes, dear, I said laughing before heading to the shower. I knew better than to set foot in the bedroom for fresh clothes while covered in dirt. Samantha would bring them to me in the bathroom along with a bag for my dirty clothes. Feeling refreshed, I sat down for lunch with my wife. Looks like you got pretty far putting everything away. Hope I'll be able to find stuff when you're done, I joked, knowing it wouldn't be appreciated but unable to help myself. She gave me a look and a... You know what, Tommy? Keep pushing your luck. Sorry, babe, I replied with a chuckle. How's it going out there? Samantha asked, putting a plate of food down in front of me. Uh, should be finished before the horses get here tomorrow. I'll accept the east fence. We'll need to pick up supplies to fix that. Oh, and I ran into our resident owl again. He was in the other barn this time. Uh, aren't all wolves supposed to be nocturnal? She queried, joining me at the table. After lunch, I returned to working on the property and got dirty all over again. I was happy with my progress and knew I would make it on time. The sun was setting, so I figured I'd call it a day after closing up the barns. Closing the barn where I'd seen the owl earlier, I saw no sign of it now. The place was a lot less creepy now that I'd fixed the lights. I smiled at no one in particular and turned off the lights before closing the barn door. Well, 
The repairs on the door are holding, thank God, I said aloud. I was relieved that I would no longer have to do battle with the oversized doors or worried about it collapsing on me when I opened or closed it. Halfway to the next barn, I stopped to take in the last glimpse of sunset with its glow of purples, reds, and golds. Moments later, I was standing alone in the dark. I hurried to the next barn and stepped inside. Looking around, I again saw no sign of the owl. Where did you go, my friend? I mumbled to myself. It was as if I was a afraid to speak too loudly. I shrugged off a shiver, but before I could turn and shut off the lights, they went out on their own. Damn it! Ah, uh, two out of three isn't bad. A barn door will probably work. I instantly regretted speaking out loud as the barn door slammed shut. Jesus! I shouted involuntarily. As if on cue came the Hoo! Hoo! What the? I trailed off, seeing the glowing eyes staring down from the rafters. Somehow, from the position of the eyes, I thought that owl looked much bigger. Oh, fuck this. I turned and began fighting with the door. The damn thing was stuck. Who? Who? Who asked you? I hollered back, still trying to force the door open. Just as I shot forward trying to blast the door open to my shoulder, I hit nothing but air and went sprawling to the ground outside. What the hell are you doing, Tommy? My eye fast with a giggle. The door was stuck in that owl. It appeared out of nowhere. Did the big old owl scare you again? She laughed, shaking her head. She stepped into the barn and turned on the lights. No, Samantha, wait. So, where's the barn owl? Looking past her, I could see the damn thing wasn't there. I swear, it was right there, looking down at me from the rafters, and the lights, and the door. The lights went out on their own, and the door slammed shut. I felt like I was in some twisted nightmare. My wife now looked concerned. Hey, hey, I I'm just messing with you, Tommy. I know, it's just, it happened just the way I said. I don't understand. He was there, really. Okay. Calm down. It's okay. With all the commotion, it probably got scared and flew out an opening somewhere. Samantha, I checked the whole barn earlier, fixing everything I could. The loft doors are locked shut, and the back door is too. This door is the only other way out. She helped me up and led me back to the house. After she helped me sit down at the dining room table, she made some tea and brought two cups to the table. Feeling any better? She asked, handing me a cup. Yes, um, I don't know what got into me. Something in those eyes, it, it just freaked me out. And one more thing, it, it was bigger, Samantha. I don't know, maybe my imagination got the better of me. Whatever it is, I've never seen you like this. We'll check over the barns tomorrow and try to figure out with fresh minds. I'm exhausted and I've been inside in the hazy all day. I can only imagine how tired you are working in that hot sun. Of course, she was right as much as I hated to admit it. I had been pushing myself, doing very physical labor in the hot sun. That's probably it. I must have gotten too much sun. I am feeling a little sunburnt. Come get cleaned up. You'll feel better. Lying in bed after a long shower, I did find a new perspective on the earlier events. I mean, what was more likely? That we had a phantom owl that was stalking me? Or that I was suffering from some form of heat exhaustion? That in my exhausted state, I envisioned a spookier version of the owl from the night before? And the latter was definitely more likely. The next day we inspected the barn. Not one feather, not one bird dropping. 
Furthermore, there was no possible way something that size could get in and out of the barn. With that settled, we headed to the stables to receive the horses. Things were going much better, and I thought I had all but forgotten the owl. I realized there was still a slight linger effect when I avoided the barn in the dark. I decided to talk to my wife about it later that evening. After a rather long discussion, she convinced me to face my fears. This time, I wasn't going unprepared. I brought flashlights and something to chalk the door so it couldn't close us in. We walked down to the barn and opened the door. And we turned out the lights and we waited. Still nothing. We used our flashlights to re-inspect the barn to no avail. Well, no ghosties here, I laughed nervously. That's the spirit. Samantha threw out with a giggle. Really, Sam? Sorry, couldn't resist it. I couldn't resist her smile. You're forgiven. Let's go back to the house, I said with a smile of my own. Just as we were shutting the door, I heard it. We heard it. Hoo! Hoo! Samantha let out an audible gulp, and we turned around. There it was. Sam? Yes? It's gotten bigger. No shit, Tommy. We both looked around wildly, searching for thou. But it disappeared again. Samantha? Yeah? Can we close the barn door now? Definitely. With that, we closed the barn door, bolted it, after speed walking to the house, we both plopped down on the couch, breathing heavily. Why are we so scared, Tommy? I mean, it's just a fucking owl. Yeah, an owl that gets larger every day and has the ability to spontaneously appear. If that owl isn't supernatural, I don't know what is, Sam. We sat talking till the sun came up. We discussed every theory we could come up with. We still kept returning to the idea that there was a reasonable explanation and that we were just making a bigger deal out of it than it was. It was based more on wishful thinking than the evidence before us, but there it was. At the end of the day, no other theory panned out, so that was what we went with. It was also the explanation that allowed us to get back to our normal lives, that is, as long as we stayed out of that barn. At least that's what we thought. It didn't happen all at once, but we would eventually find out just how wrong we were. We lived in denial for a while. The barn simply didn't exist in our daily routine. Out of sight, out of mind. Our lives were peaceful. We spent time with the horses and cared for all our animals. We were both working from home now. So we had plenty of time, no rush hour traffic. We made amazing progress on the property, and it was really shaping up to be everything we dreamed of. We really believed it was over, and had to celebrate with plans for a new structure in a place of that barn. We were going to tear that sucker down and never worry about it again. We had a contractor come over to bid on demolishing the barn and building the new one. Yeah, he ran out of there screaming and wouldn't return our calls after that. The same thing happened with the next two contractors. Samantha, find me the number for an equipment rental company. We're renting a bulldozer. I figured I didn't have to go into the barn to tear it down. What can I say? The plan sounded solid in my mind. Not so much in real life, however. The dozer had been delivered. We were more than ready to knock that barn down. I fired the machine up and moved into position. But when I started heading at the barn, the machine stopped and would only work in reverse. The service mechanic came out and couldn't find anything wrong. He tried heading at the barn from different angles, different sides. 
that every time he got within 10 feet of the barn, the machine would stop. I'm really sorry, sir. It's the damnedest thing I've ever seen. I can't find anything wrong with the equipment that would cause that to happen. I'll make sure you get a full refund, sir. The service mechanic sounded truly perplexed. I could only imagine what he'd sound like if I told him the barn owl was responsible for this. Well, Sam... I guess it's time to look for someone who gets rid of barn owls. This isn't a normal owl, Tommy. I know. It's a start. If they can't get rid of it, we'll call an exorcist. It took us a while to find an expert that actually dealt with an owl removal and set up an appointment for that evening. Tom, this is Brad Johnson turning our call. You say you have an exceptionally large owl you need removed? Yes, sir. We seem to have run out of options, and coexisting hasn't been working out. Tell me, is he about two, maybe two and a half feet tall? As of last night, he's a little over four feet tall. Brad? Are you there? Um, yes. Sorry. You said it's over four feet tall? That's correct. That's all. The tallest breed in North America is the Great Gray Owl. They usually top out to about 33 inches. Now, the blackest in fish owl, that species is known to get as large as six feet. Think that's what we have here, Brad? I don't know. I'll have to take a look. Doesn't seem likely, though. That breed is usually found in Asia or Russia. You know, the Far East. How about I come take a look this evening, right before dusk? Thank you, Brad. That would be awesome. As promised, he arrived before dusk. Introductions and handshakes concluded all around. He asked me to show him where the owl was most commonly sighted. Right this way, Brad, I said, leading him to the barn while my wife, Samantha, filled him in. The barn is the only place we've seen him. While he hasn't made physical contact, we're pretty sure he's aggressive. If nothing else, he's definitely territorial. Really? Owls usually avoid people. <laughs> this one makes it a point to screw with you. Samantha replied. And Brad gave a confused look. So I stepped in trying to avoid questions we'd rather not answer. It's not something that can be really explained with words, Brad. Honestly, I think you'll have to see it for yourself to understand. He looked at us nervously as if we were a duel of sadistic serial killers. Possibly some sick couple luring him in to their barn so they could slaughter him. Can't say that I blame him. We had only just met and our story was becoming more and more outlandish. Now the details were becoming obscure. Who wouldn't find this situation odd, not to mention questionable? He seemed to have praised us and decided we weren't in fact psychopaths because he visibly relaxed before speaking again. Well, I guess we'll just have to take a look then. Brad said with a lighthearted chuckle that put me at ease. Yep, here we are at the dragon's lair, so to speak. I returned with my own light-hearted chuckle. I proceeded to open the barn door for him, and pointed at the barn's usual roost spot in the rafters. Brad stepped in, having a look around. He found no evidence of any type of bird homesteading in our barn. As before, there were no droppings and no feathers. There was also 
no owl. What's this all about? Brad says, expecting he'd been duped. I know how this looks, but I promise you. It was all the time I had before the lights went out and the door slammed shut, leaving Samantha and I locked outside. It also meant that Brad was locked inside, in the dark, with the owl. Hoo! Hoo! We heard through the door. Before this moment, Brad must have been standing in stunned silence because all we heard after the door closed was the owl. Now Brad was ready to speak again. There really is an owl. Jesus, he's more like seven feet tall. Guys, you can let me out now. I believe you. The click, click, click of the light switch being repeatedly toggled could be heard right before the screaming started. We immediately began trying to wrench the door free. At first, our efforts gave nothing in return. Then so suddenly as they slammed, the door flew open again, and Brad was ejected from the barn. We quickly raced over to where he landed and helped him up. Are you okay, Brad? What happened? I don't know what that thing is. But it's definitely not an owl. With that, he hastily retreated to his car and sped off, leaving a cloud of ranch dirt hanging in the air. Well, I guess he won't be coming back, Samantha said without much enthusiasm. When we turned and looked at each other, we burst out in uncontrollable laughter. Maybe it was the combination of fatigue and stress that caused this outburst. Or maybe we were just morbid, and the look on his face was too comical to resist a good laugh. Well, setting the barn on fire probably wouldn't be a good idea. Even if it lit, it might set the whole property on fire. What about the exorcist idea, Tommy? I don't think the Catholic Church would believe us. Something tells me the owl isn't very religious either. Besides that... Damn, I'll probably wouldn't take a priest seriously. Maybe a paranormal investigator? You know, you might be onto something, Sam. At least they may be able to figure out what they're dealing with. Could shed some light on what direction we should go next. We began looking for an investigator and doing our research. Other than a few Native American legends, we didn't find much involving owls. What we did find just didn't fit what we were facing. There were, surprisingly enough, way more paranormal investigation services than one would think. Website after website we searched. We made a list and narrowed it down. We wrote down anything we thought would be relevant and prepared a paper thoroughly describing our situation. Once we were completely ready, it was time to move forward. The next step was to start making some phone calls. Going down our list one by one, we did just that. We called everyone on our list. Even paranormal investigators were skeptical. Some just weren't interested in the owl. It wasn't high enough profile. Eventually, we found one that was willing to at least take a look. I really thought it was going to be easier than this. Having to convince someone who believed in the paranormal that you were having a paranormal experience was like a sick joke. I think I would have had an easier time with the church. With an appointment for the next afternoon, we were all set for the investigation team. They, of course, wanted to film. And we figured if they couldn't tell us what it was, maybe someone watching could, so we agreed. We were a little worried about people thinking we were a bunch of weirdos, people flocking to our place like it was some kind of spectacle. In the end, the need for resolution to our fine feathered problem won out. The name of the investigation group was the Paranormal Watch. They were a small group out of Scotland that happened to be in the States. They just wrapped up an investigation and were happy to find a second gig while they were out this way. Their show had 
just recently been slated for international viewing, so they were hungry. This would give them something different that hadn't been done a thousand times. And if they found something, it would be big for them. If not for that, well, we'd have been out of luck. We had exhausted our list and started calling people that weren't even on it. It was one of those calls that put me in touch with the Paranormal Watch. We picked up the group of young people led by an older man in his 50s. He had apparently been a professor before starting this group, made up mostly of his prior students. They were pleasant enough and actually seemed excited about the case. I told him about the bulldozer failure, both the owl expert and all the contractors running off our property. Hearing that just seemed to increase their excitement all the more. I hope your crew is prepared, Professor McIntyre. Brad, the owl expert, was literally thrown out of the barn. Please, call me James. And I wouldn't worry about my crew too much. These lads and that lass right there are hardy enough. They also know exactly what they signed up for. I do appreciate the warning, though. Any idea what thing might be? Samantha asked. Our research has yet to uncover anything concrete. But there are entities that will take the form of an animal. They'll usually remain in disguise until they feel strong enough to reveal themselves as they really are. These type of entities often face and fear. They feed off our fear until they're strong enough for the main course. The main course, I repeated in surprise. Your soul, lad. Or your life force, if you will. Now it's Samantha's turn to sound worried. Life force? You mean it will suck the life out of us? If it is this type of entity, then yes, lass. That would be its goal. However, once you know what you're dealing with, there are ways to stop it. Well, that's certainly a relief. Thank you for coming out, James. It really does mean a lot to us, I said genuinely. When we got back to our ranch, the team began setting up around the barn. I'd never seen so many gadgets. So... What's your first move, Professor? Sorry, I mean, James. We're going to try and make contact. If the entity's willing enough, we should know what we're dealing with fairly shortly. My wife and I set up some chairs and a table about ten yards away. We had brought some snacks and an ice chest, like some sort of tailgate party. All we were missing was the barbecue. We also had a laptop that Professor McIntyre's tech guy, Andy, had set up. It connected via Bluetooth and their camera feeds so we could see what was going on when they went inside. We were all settled in, ready for the show. This is kind of exciting. I'm glad you're enjoying this, Sam. Oh, come on. You can't tell me you don't find this the least bit interesting. Of course I do. I'm also on the verge of freaking out. We could be leading those people to their doom. They're professionals, Tommy. I'm sure they'll be fine. I held up my beer and said, I hope you're right, before tilting the can up and draining its contents. She laughed and popped open the beer for herself and leaned back in her chair. As she fixed her gaze on the laptop, one of the crew members gave us a thumbs up. He was signaled that they were ready to go, and I returned the gesture with no idea why. Well, here we go, Sam. I guess we're along for the ride. I laughed nervously. They had two members monitoring from outside and two cameramen going in. Then there was the professor and two other guys and a girl who had GoPro-style rigs on. Each of them also held a different gadget in their hands. 
And they were circled up in front of the barn having some kind of pre-game meeting, leaving us on the edge of our seats and growing impatient. When we saw the two of them return to their monitors and put their headsets on, we knew it was finally time. The door opened and they began cautiously proceeding inside. We could hear the professor giving a spiel to the camera, but we were both focused on what the camera was seeing around them. We were waiting for that damned owl to make its appearance. The team was inside taking readings with their devices they held while the professor continued grandstanding for the camera. This went on for a good 15 minutes and we were sure they would come up empty handed at this point. That owl sure had a flair for the dramatic though. Cause it waited until the last possible minute. No sooner than the team turned its back to leave, than the lights went out. There was some confusion at first, but they finally switched the cameras to night vision. I don't think the professor even saw it coming. When one of the cameramen switched to night vision, the professor was still standing there facing him. Wings appeared in the background, one on each side of him. Then the head appeared looming over him. The wingspan was considerably longer than the professor was tall and stretched out beyond the camera frame. The large hooked beak and the glowing eyes were the epitome of ominousness. The wings flapped, first closing around the professor, then opening. There was nothing left where the professor's head should have been. The cameraman must have fainted because all you could see from that feed now was the ceiling. The two team members monitoring the away team were yelling at him over the comms, telling him to get out of there. You could see the girl with the GoPro rig and the other cameraman were now facing each other. They were urging each other to run when the girl shot straight up out of view. The cameraman began running. When we looked up to see him come out the door, just in time to get yanked right back in. The camera landed outside the barn. We could see ourselves off in the camera view's distance on the laptop. Judging by the picture on the laptop, the camera had landed upside down. The two crew members had been monitoring ran in after him. The screams ended less than a minute later. Holy shit, Tommy. You ain't whistling Dixie, Sam. I may or may not have been about 18 beers in already, and slightly numb to the present events. Then again, maybe it was just shock. What the fuck? fuck do we do now, Mr. Nonchalant? Hell, I don't know. They don't have to worry about calling the insurance. They signed the waiver forms. I guess that just leaves the authorities. Do you think they'll believe us, Tom? Well, we do have the video. I suppose you want me to call them. Well, Samantha, I'm a little drunk. You're right. I better call. I had the hardest time listening to her explain things to the police. I had to walk away. I was laughing so hard. She was cussing up a storm by the time she got off the phone. So, I guess they're not coming. Oh, they're coming, Tommy. I told them if they didn't, I would drive the bodies down there and drag them into their station. Mm, so they're coming, but they're really pissed. Yep. And Samantha's confirmation, we sat in our chairs, waited for the police. After glancing at the laptop screen, I decided to close it, let out a sigh, and grabbed another beer. Samantha shrugged her shoulders and joined me. I figured after seeing the bloodbath in her barn, the police would understand why I was drinking. And if they didn't, it was because they didn't believe us and I was going to jail anyway. With the arrival of the police came complete chaos. We were unaware that they had decided to live stream their investigation. People started showing up in droves with the seconds of the police showing up. There were so many people the officers had the scene. I had to call for backup. They couldn't even 
begin anything like an investigation for damn near an hour. When they finally began, they found that one cameraman was still alive. He was trapped under Professor McIntyre's headless body. This was fortunate because he was able to corroborate our story and verify the authenticity of the video recordings. At least everything up to the point where he passed out. At first, the police were at a loss for words. Then they kept asking if it was some guy in a costume. We showed them the footage from the exterior cameras, which proved nothing had left the barn prior to them getting here. The canine unit was called in. They confirmed that no one was hiding in the barn, and there were no other exits that were unlocked. You could see the loft door from the exterior camera and the back door from one of the cameras that had been dropped inside. The evidence was solid. The killer had just vanished into thin air. Costume my ass, I whispered to Samantha's ear. It caused both of us to choke a fit of impending laughter down. The lead detective had a word with us and was doing his best to rationalize what had happened here tonight. I finally had to interject. Officer, sometimes there's just no rational explanation. It was going to be a really long night and an even longer morning. The morning was long indeed. I was exhausted. My head was killing me. And we still had a super owl, natural owl monster with no real explanation of what it really was. And that was until we got a call from the surviving member of the Paranormal Watch. He had heard from a viewer who he had swore was a credible source and gave us the person's number. Evidently, this credible source had been watching the live stream and was pretty sure she knew what this was. At this point, I figured what the hell and gave her a call. Jessica, this is Tommy and Samantha. I was told you might have some answers for us. Yes, absolutely. Listen, I know you've been through a lot, but I would like to come down and explain this in person. When I looked at Sam, she gave me a nod, so I gave Jessica our address and said, Sure, come on down. The barn was still an active crime scene, so we were really weren't sure what we could accomplish with Jessica coming. We were also worried about any more bodies piling up after the results of the previous night. I called Jeff, a cameraman who had survived, and see how he was doing and thank him for getting us in touch with Jessica. He was recovering from what the doctors called severe mental trauma. I promised Jeff I would check on him again soon and keep him updated on the outcome of Jessica's visit. Quite frankly, I'm surprised he was even interested in hearing any more about that insidious owl. Samantha and I agreed on a nap before Jessica's arrival. The previous night's events were still weighing pretty heavy on us. Jessica pulled up driving a pink 76 Cadillac. It was a large Fleetwood Brougham, what people like to call a land yacht. She stepped out of the vehicle and just kept getting out. My wife told me to close my mouth and laughed at me. Evidently my mouth was hanging open at the sight of this 6 foot 4 inch woman getting out of a big pink Cadillac. Somehow she sounded much smaller on the phone. When she approached us, she offered her hand. I waited for Sam to shake it first, then followed suit, trying not to seem awkward. Jessica was a very pleasant woman, with a gentle demeanor which stood in contrast to her size. When we sat down, she explained what the owl creature really was and what we needed to do. You see, this thing is quite old. It uses different forms every time it comes in an effort to blend with the environment. Professor McIntyre was correct about the entity feeding off of fear to gain strength. What he overlooked was the fact that more people <coughs> equal more fear at one time. Bringing his entire team into the barn at once just supersized its meal. That's what allowed it to gain enough strength. 
That's why it was able to cause physical harm so soon. You kept bringing around people, feeding it with fear. The professor brings it a feast. I'm not blaming you. There was no way you could have known. So now for a solution. You'll need a lot of salt, enough to encircle the entire barn. You'll also need a religious symbol, one that you truly believe in. You will need one for each corner of the barn. If you have anything belonging to the owl, it would be stronger to include it with each talisman. The last item will be an actual owl. Introducing the real thing into its lair forces it out of its disguise. It has fed well, but not yet enough to feel safe in its true form. This means you will have it at a disadvantage. Now, do you have anything of the entities? When Jessica came back the next day, I gave her the white feather I had found and four St. Christopher pins. She affixed pieces of the feather to each pin and sprinkled holy water on them. I was going to use a crucifix, but I offered for the St. Christopher medallions instead. She had said that I had to truly believe, and that it had to be me because I made first contact. While I believe in God, I have taken back my will on multiple occasions instead of trusting in the Lord. I'm a work in progress. What can I say? Ever since I was little, though, I have carried a St. Christopher, or at the very least had one in my car. I had unwavering faith in him. I know he's only doing God's work, so it was God's power I was trusting in. But I figured I wouldn't overthink it and waver this way. Do you have the salt? Jessica asked my wife. Hell yeah, sorry, I mean yes. My wife responded, suddenly feeling embarrassed. Uh, we got one of those machines you truck a baseball diamond with and loaded it up with salt, I offered, trying to bail out my wife. Nice, that should do just fine. Remember, and this is quite possibly the most important thing, the more fear you show, the more power you give it. It can't hurt you unless it, you give it that power. I took a deep breath and focused on summoning the courage I would need. The task ahead of me was not something I was looking forward to, but I kept repeating Jessica's words in my head. It can't hurt you if you're not afraid. It can't hurt you if you're not afraid. Letting out another long breath and feeling a lot calmer, I told Jessica I was ready. Good. When we get to the barn, you will walk in you will walk to each corner and affix one of these talismans to it. Next you will set this cage just inside the barn door. Then just open the cage and shut the barn door. Finally you make a circle around the entire barn with the salt. Make sure there are no breaks, no openings. It has to be a complete circle. When we got out to the barn, I went around to each corner doing as Jessica had said. With the talismans in place, I was feeling pretty confident now. I released the owl in the barn and closed the door. So far, so good, I said to the girls as I passed by with the field chalker. As I was creating the circle of salt to seal what we had done, I felt the ground shaking. There was a deep rumbling sound coming from the barn. That means it's working, Jessica yelled over the noise. Good, I yelled back, now more angry than scared. When the circle was complete, the ground shook harder and harder. There was an ear-splitting screech followed by a deep howl. All at once... Everything went still and the world fell silent. And we just stood there quietly waiting until the sounds of the natural world returned. You can open the barn door now. It has moved on. Jessica encouraged me. Samantha turned and gave Jessica a big hug, thanking her profusely. 
I turned back to the door, took a deep breath, and opened it. I let out the breath I realized I'd been holding and finally allowed myself to relax. I was suddenly hit with wings and feathers. Sent back reeling from the unexpected assault, I struggled to keep my balance. I watched the owl we had released into the barn fly away. Relieved to see it wasn't a giant demon owl, but still shaken. I looked back at Sam and Jessica, laughing nervously. <laughs> it was just an owl, I said with some sense of relief. Samantha came running over to me, and we held each other in a long embrace. Is it really over, Tommy? Yes, love, I think it is. When we looked back at Jessica, she was heading back to her car. Well, my work here is done. She said with a smile. Jessica climbed back into her big pink Cadillac and drove off with a hound out the window, waving goodbye. I took my wife's hand and we began walking back to the house. Pausing briefly, I took one last look at the barn. We're still tearing the barn down, right? Whatever you want, baby. Samantha replied with a smile. The next few weeks were relatively peaceful. There was still a lot of work to be done, but we were finally enjoying our ranch. We did tear that barn down and built a new one. The cost really wasn't in the budget, but we were able to customize the build and get more out of it. We added indoor-outdoor stalls, a tack room, a small office, and a bathroom complete with shower. There was a small hay storage meant just for any horses we decided to put in the new stalls. The second barn, which we decided to leave up, would serve as our main feed storage. While we were still working on the place, and we still had jobs, we actually found plenty of time to relax. Things were great for a while. Then, the odd noises started. They were subtle at first. You would wake up in the middle of the night thinking you heard something, but then it was gone. Eventually, the noises got more aggressive. Then stuff started disappearing or moving around the house. I don't mean anything as obvious as it happening right in front of you. You would set something down for a minute, and when you went to pick it up, it wasn't there. Of course, you would go crazy trying to figure out what you could have done with whatever it was. But eventually, you started to realize it wasn't all in your head. Sometimes you would find what you were searching for someplace weird. Maybe in a cabinet that you hadn't been in all week. Sometimes, you would never see the item again. One night, we woke up to a banging sound followed by something that sounded like a car crash. We both jumped out of bed and been getting looking for the source. Furniture was overturned, dishes were on the floor, and windows were shattered. At first, everything had gone eerily quiet. Then came the familiar, Hoo! Hoo! My blood ran ice cold. We immediately called Jessica. When she answered the phone groggily, I explained what was happening. What? It's back? She said, sounding more awake now. Yes, and this time it's tearing our house apart, I replied as calmly as I could. I don't even stand. I don't even understand once the soap blew away. The talismans would keep it from returning to anywhere on your property. It basically banishes the entity. Uh, oops. Uh, sorry, Jessica. We may have screwed up. Don't tell me you took them down. We took the entire barn down. Oh, shit. If you still have the medallions, you have to put them on all four corners of the house. Then encircle the house in salt. The salt just has to last the night. The talismans will do the rest, but you will have to go back in the house to complete the ritual. You have to face it. Remember, no fear. 
It can't hurt you if you don't feed it. Okay, uh, I have the talismans. I'll start putting them up. My wife won't get the filled chalker. Good. Just remain calm, Tommy. You can do this. I remembered how I began feeling angry last time. So I focused my thoughts on how it was terrifying my family and how it was threatening everything we'd worked so hard for. I felt my blood began to boil as I circled the house laying down the salt. Once the circle was completed, I stood at the door staring at the house. I was going to face this thing one last time. The house shook as if there was an earthquake. I swayed from side to side, entering. A bead of sweat rolled down my forehead, but this time it was from rage rather than fear. I strode confidently to the middle of the house where I could make my stand. A lamp flew at me from the darkness and I batted it away easily. You can't hurt me. You're not welcome here, I bellowed. Then she screamed as if it were in pain and a chair flew at me from across the room falling short. You're growing weaker. You should leave before I kill you. I had no idea if it was possible to kill this thing. I thought it sounded good. The creature let out another howl, this time much weaker. Leave our house, I commanded with as much authority as I could muster. With a sound like thunder, there was a hot blast of air. A bone rattling quake reverberated through the house, then through my entire body. It suddenly went so quiet, I thought for a moment I had gone deaf. Then Samantha's voice calling out to me reassured me that I hadn't. Tommy, are you okay? I walked out onto the front porch and let her know that I was, and that it was finally over, again. Hopefully, this time, for good. Thank you for listening to tonight's podcast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we just got this new channel started. Uh, over the following weeks, I'm going to be posting a new story once a week. Uh, we thought we'd have some fun with this first one. My wife and daughter joined me in narrating. Uh, my wife is Samantha. My daughter read the uh, Owl Expert, Brad. And, of course, she also handled Jessica. I hope you enjoyed her reading. Uh, they're both a little new to this, as am I. We had a few technical difficulties, but we powered through it. So I hope you guys had fun with it. I know we did. Again, uh, every Friday night, I'll be posting a new story. And after about three or four weeks, we'll probably be doing some visits to some paranormal spots and alleged haunted areas posting some video of that and add more content i also got a book coming out welcome to the dark it's a collection of short horror stories it should be coming out on amazon the second week of october 2023 i hope you guys will take a look for it again thank you for checking our channel i hope you enjoyed tonight's show uh, if you can give us a like or subscribe and catch some of our future podcasts, it would be greatly appreciated. Until then, this is Damos in the Dark, and I'll see you next time.